Hola a todos. Hoy presentaremos un nuevo capítulo de este maravilloso curso. Preguntas. ¿Has estudiado? ¿Cuánto tiempo le has dedicado a este curso? Bueno, seguimos con el propósito firme y con la confianza en Dios de que vamos a aprender a hablar inglés. Esta es una gran oportunidad de Ability to Help y de la Fundación de Inclusiones. No te rindas, no podemos descansar, seguimos estudiando para hablar inglés. Hi class, good morning, how is your day going? Okay, today we are in our 154 class. And today we are going to learn about a uh, permission. How ask someone um, permission to do something. So this is an important one topic where you could find new ways to ask for permission. So firstly, let's see a video about some question is um, a, in general sentences that you could write on your notebook. So let's see this video about Permission, how ask someone permission? So let's see, I have a video here. May I come in? This is our first. It's me, may I come in? May I come in is a question. It's a asking for permission. May I come in? May I come in is one of them. Don't forget you could a uh, ask for permission with the model verb. So, may I come in? May I come in is one of them. May I come in? It's a second one question. But it's really hot in here. Can I, Can I open the window? Can I open the window? Can I open the window is our second question for asking. Whoa, Adapted Mind Math. Come explore the site with me. I'm in first. Vamos a encontrar algunas preguntas, algunas ideas para preguntar por un permiso cuando tú le quieres pedir permiso a alguien. Y en este momento lo vamos a trabajar directamente con el tema de Enfermería. Vamos a verlo en un contexto real. So I need you practice this topic. So that's why we are going to work with our USA Learn site. So let's see. Firstly, go uh, and click on this unit. So let's see. Okay, click on skills for the nursing assistant. So click here, then click on number one, effective communication. Finally, we are going to practice about requesting for a permission. So let's see. So. Requesting permission. You should always obtain permission from patients and residents before beginning a procedure. Most often, you can do this by asking, okay? For example, I'm going to take your temperature now, okay? Here are other ways to ask for permission. May I take this tray away? Can I put this cream on your feet? Could I put your book on this table? Do you mind if I lower the volume on the TV? Is it okay if I put this around your arm? Is it all right if I open the shades? Okay, we have different ways to ask for a permission. So, may is a moral verb, so we understand it. May I take this tray away? Can is a moral verb, so that's why you understand it. Can I put this cream on your feet? Could is also a moral verb. So, could I put your book on this table? Simple one question. 
Do you mind if this one is new? So if you want to ask for a permission, you could ask, do you mind if I lower the volume on the TV? Is it okay if it's a second one new? And it is all right if you could ask for permission like this. So let's work about it. Formal requests for permission, formal. Last one was a requesting for permission, but requesting for permission, but a normal one way. So formal request for permission is with would. It's a modal verb, so you understand it right now. For more formal request, use would. Notice that a simple past tense verb form is used with would, even though the request is for the present. For example, would be okay if I moved your flowers? Would be okay, would be all right if I opened the shades? Would you mind if I turned off the TV? So notice that bear is on past. Would you, would it be okay if I moved, moved? Would it be all right if I opened? Would you mind if I turned past way of the verb? When replying to would you mind, no means yes. The answer, no. I don't mind means it's okay to turn off the TV. The answer, yes, I mind, means it's not okay to turn off the TV. So be careful because mind. Te importa, te importaría, mind. Cuando te preguntan, would you mind, es, te importaría si, entonces si yo te pregunto a ti, oye, te importaría si apago el televisor, would you mind if I turn off the TV? Y tú me dices, no, significa que todo está bien, entonces no te importa, lo puedo apagar. The answer, no, I don't mind, means it's okay. To turn off the TV. Si tú me dices, no, está bien, entonces es porque lo puedo apagar. Pero si tú me dices, yes, I mind, be careful, because it's not good. Because you don't want it. Si, yo, si tú dices, eh, sí, sí me importa, quiere decir que no puedo apagar el televisor. Eso es lo que dice al final. Formal requests for permission. For more formal requests, use would. Notice that a simple past tense verb form is used with would, even though the request is for the present. Would it be okay if I moved your flowers? Would it be all right if I opened the shades? Would you mind if I turned off the TV? Warning, when replying to would you mind, no means yes. The answer no, I don't mind means it's okay to turn off the TV. The answer yes, I mind means it's not okay to turn off the TV. Okay, help me to solve it. Mr. M, I think the volume on the TV is too loud. Do you mind if I turn it down? Mr. M, I think the volume on the TV is too loud. Do you mind if I turn it down? Which request do you hear? Do you mind if I turn it down? Do you mind turning it down? Would you mind if I turned it down? Mr. M, I think the volume on the TV is too loud. Do you mind if I turn it down? Mr. M, I think the volume on the TV is too loud. Do you mind if I turn it down? Mr. M, I think the volume on the TV is too loud. Do you mind if I turn it down? Do you mind if I turn it down? The nurse say, I think the volume is so loud. So, do you mind if I turn it down? Okay, that was great. Which request do you hear? Is it okay if I turn down the volume to the TV? Is it okay if I turn down the volume to the TV? Is it okay if I turn down the volume of the TV? Is it okay? How was breakfast? The breakfast was very good. May I take your tray? Yes, you may.
Okay. Uh, the nurse is uh, asking for permission. So which request do you hear? How was breakfast? The breakfast was very good. May I take your tray? Yes, you may. How was breakfast? The breakfast was very good. May I take your tray? Yes, you may. Ok, que si puede llevarse los platos, ¿no? Entonces, take your tray, may I can take your tray. Ok, so, polite request. In order to give your patients as much independence as possible, it is important to ask for their participation in every procedure. They will be more cooperative and feel like they are part of a team. If you make requests rather than give orders. So it is important a polite request on this case. So polite request can use question form with modal verbs, modal verbs. Could you leave your knees please? Can you move back on the bed? Will you hold this for me? Would you make a first a fist for me? Would you please hand me that empty can? Would you mind lifting your arms a little higher? Remember, would you mind is followed by the ing verb form. A simple present form for follows all other modal verbs. So, would, would you please? Would you mind lifting? Would you mind lifting? Look at this. Would you mind lifting with ing? But would you mind is a normal way of the verb. The second one is with ing. Would you mind lifting? Warning. Sometimes no means yes. The answer no, I don't mind, means it's okay. Yes and mind, be careful because it's really important for them. So let's... Polite requests use a question form with modal verbs. Could you lift your knees, please? Can you move back on the bed? Will you hold this for me? Would you make a fist for me? Would you please hand me that empty can? Would you mind lifting your arm a little higher? Remember, would you mind is followed by the ing verb form. A simple present verb form follows all other modal verbs. Warning, when no means yes. The answer no, I don't mind means okay or yes. The answer yes, I mind means it's not okay or no. Do you mind if I, so which one is the best? Is the best? Do you mind if I open the shades? Do you mind if I will open the shades? Or do you mind if I opened the shades? What do you think? Is not okay this one because it's with wood. So the first one is okay. Don't forget it with ed, but if you say would, would it be okay if I, ah, uh, would it be okay if I would open the shades? If I am going to open the shade, or would it be okay if I opened? the shades because if you have at the beginning of the question would you have to add the pair on past way look at this would it be okay if i opened the shades okay could i take your blood pressure would i take your blood pressure can you take your blood pressure so which one is the best ¿Podría yo tomar tu presión arterial o tomaría tu presión arterial? ¿Puedes tú tomar tu presión arterial? No creo. Yo creo que es la primera. Could I take? ¿Podría yo tomar tu presión arterial? 
Which of these questions is asking for permission? Can you have a look at your ID band? May I have a look at your ID band? Will I have a look at your ID band? So I think it's the last one. Would I have a look at your ID band? Which of these question is asking for permission? ¿Cuál de estas está preguntándole, pidiéndole un permiso? Ah, ok. ¿Podrías tú mirar tu banda, tu, tu curación, tu... ¿Podría yo? Ah, mira, es esta on the second one. ¿Podría yo echarle un vistazo a tu a tu curación, a tu cura, a tu... Listo. Which of this question is asking someone to do something? ¿Cuál de estas preguntas le está pidiendo a alguien que haga algo? Will I grab a transfer belt for you? Would you mind grabbing a transfer belt for me? May I grab a transfer belt for you? So I think it's the second one. Would you mind driving? So, would you mind driving a transfer belt for me? Don't forget it, ING. You want to remove the resident's breakfast tray. What would you ask? It is okay if I take this tray? Would you please take that tray? Would you mind moving the tray? Would you mind? It is okay. It's a good way to say, ¿Está bien si me llevo los platos? It is okay if I take this tray? Okay. You want the patient to move to the center of the bed. What would you ask? May I move back? to the center of the bed. Could you move back to the center of the bed? May you move back to the center of the bed? Don't forget it, you won't move him. You want the patient to move to the center of the bed. You want the patient to move, so may I move? It's not okay. Could you move back to the center? Podría usted moverse? Great. You want the resident to step onto the scale. What would you ask? Would it be okay if you step onto this scale? Would you please step on the scale? May I step into the scale? I think would you, would you? Yes, it's okay. Would you please step onto the scale? You want to move the patient's flowers. What would you ask? Would you mind if I move your flowers? Would you mind moving your flowers? Would you please move your flowers? Would you mind? I think it is possible, but it's not okay. The first one, ¿te importaría? Would you mind if I moved your flowers? ¿Te importaría si muevo las flores? No, I mind. Oh, yes, I mind. You want the resident to write down what he wants. What would you ask? Would you mind writing what you want? Would you mind would you mind write what you want? Would you mind wrote what you want? Recuerda después del would you like. Va el verbo con ing, va el verbo normal o al verbo en pasado. De fin, Marín de Dopingue es con ing. No lo olvides. Would you mind writing? Este es el que va con ing. Okay, 
So here you could ask, you could practice your speaking skills. If you won't do it, uh, you could go to USA Learns and solve all this unit uh, by yourself. But listen. May I turn down the volume? 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 Oh, it's good. So, do you mind if I open the shades? Do you mind if I open the shades? Repeat with me. Do you mind if I open the shades? Listen. Would it be okay if I moved your flowers to this table? Would it be okay if I moved your flowers to this table? Okay, so this is an interesting one exercise because you could practice or improve your um, speaking skills. So let's see. I talked to you about a um, permission request permissions. So you could complete all these units. Uh, you could uh, begin uh, in the number one, unit introduction. So let's see. Uh, please go to this unit and solve all this unit alone by yourself. So look at this. Don't forget it. This is your this is your homework. So click on skills for the nursery assistant. Here, click on number one, then solve all this unit. You have 15 minutes or half an hour more after this class. So you could uh, complete all this unit because I explained you what happened with the uh, request permission. So that's why you could do it by yourself. Please go to USA Learns and complete it. Welcome to this course where you will learn vocabulary and communication skills to help you be successful in the healthcare field. You will have many opportunities to practice listening, speaking, and taking notes. You will also learn how to communicate with patients and healthcare staff on the job. Okay, uh, this is because you are going to be a nurse in another country. So uh, you could, you will also learn how to communicate with patients or with anyone. So let's see. Lesson one, effective communication. Hi, my name is Carla and I'm a licensed nurse. Congratulations on your decision to study for a job in the healthcare field. As a care provider in the health profession, your ability to understand and clearly communicate with your clients, your supervising nurse and members of your team will be a critical part of your work. In these four lessons, you'll learn the meaning of effective communication and strategies to help you become an effective communicator on the job. You will also practice academic skills that will help you succeed in your studies. Each lesson begins with a short lecture. Listen to the lecture as many times as you need to and take notes in an outline form. You'll need to learn a lot of academic and medical terms. Always write down new vocabulary words and use a dictionary when you're not sure about the meaning. Write on your notes. Be sure to practice your pronunciation. You will be able to listen, practice speaking, and hear your voice. This will help you improve your pronunciation and your confidence when speaking. The fun begins when you apply your new knowledge in the lab setting as part of our team working with patients. Our CNA students, Tricia, Eric, and Paula, practice communication skills and one core skill in the lab. Observe their mistakes and successes, and then practice the steps. Before you start this lesson, please make sure you have paper and a pen to take notes and write down new words. A quiet atmosphere so you can focus your attention 
and at least 30 minutes with no interruptions. Great, be careful. Make sure you have a paper or your notebook to write on it. Don't be distracted. Don't have distraction near to you because you don't need interruptions. So let's see. In this lesson, you will listen for the main idea and details in a lecture and take notes. Identify and practice effective communication skills when meeting patients. Identify and practice asking permission and making polite requests. Identify, Identify and talk through the opening procedure of all core skills. Repeat. Communication is an important part of a nurse assistant's job. Communication. Repeat after me. Communication is an important part of a nurse assistant's job. Communication is an important part of a nurse assistant's job. The basic elements of communication are sender, message, and receiver. Elements. The basic elements of communication are sender, message, and receiver. The sender is the person who wants to share information. Sender is that patient person who wants to uh, do, say something. A message is the information the sender wants to share. The receiver is the person who gets the message. The receiver is the person who gets the message. Hear you. Feedback. Feedback is a response message from the receiver. Feedback is a response. If your communication is effective, the patient will understand what to do. Effective communication. The intended message is what the sender wanted or meant to communicate. Is that intended message, the intended message is what the sender want to mean to communicate, la intención. A receiver's response tells the sender the message is understood. She doesn't like sharing her personal information. He doesn't like sharing her personal information. Share. Share with you, share with us. Okay. What is communication? What are some methods people use to communicate with each other? What do you think effective communication means? Listen for the answer to this question. When does effective communication take place? Today, I'm going to talk about communication. What is communication? Well, very simply, communication is sharing and exchanging information, thoughts, ideas, or feelings. Humans use different methods to communicate, such as speech, writing, illustrations, body language, or technology. We need three basic elements for communication to take place. A sender, a message, and a receiver. The sender is the person who wants to share information. The message is the information or ideas the sender wants to share and the receiver is the person for whom the message is intended. Feedback. You know, all three parts must work well for the communication to be effective. If there are any errors in any of the parts, what's gonna happen? The message may not be received, or the message that is received may not be what the sender wanted to communicate. Effective communication only takes place if the message is understood. Now, we said that the sender is the person who shares a message. He initiates the communication. The receiver gets the message, and if the receiver has a response to the message, this is called feedback. The most Through feedback, the receiver lets... ...is the feedback or response, because the response is the... Um, 
is you give a response because you understand. If you don't understand, you, know, you don't give a response or feedback. So let's see. Today, I'm going to talk about communication. What is communication? Well, very simply, communication is sharing and exchanging information, thoughts, ideas, or feelings. When the sender sends his message, when the sender knows and receives understood his message, when the receiver hears the message. So look at this. It's okay. It, when does effective communication take place is because the sender knows the receiver understand his message. That's all. So let's see. Communication is. Today, I'm going to talk about communication. What is communication? Well, very simply, communication is sharing and exchanging information, thoughts, ideas, or feelings. Humans use different methods to communicate, such as speech, writing, illustrations, body language, or technology. We need three basic elements for communication to take place. A sender, a message, and a receiver. The sender is the person who wants to share information. The message is the information or ideas the sender wants to share. And the receiver is the person for whom the message is intended. You know, all three parts must work well. Don't forget it right uh, on your notebook, the ideas, basic elements of communication. So let's see. Simple notes, effective communication. So you have a, a, a good one exercise to practice this kind of knowledge. So let's see the vocabulary. You can confirm a patient's identity by looking at his armband. You can confirm a patient's identity by looking at his armband. Armband. Confirm. Speech. Important one word. His speech has been difficult to understand since his last stroke. His speech has been difficult to understand since his last stroke. Important one word. The patient has a good attitude and is always cooperative. Attitude. The patient has a good attitude and is always cooperative. Attitude. The patient. The patient refused care, so I couldn't assist him. The patient refused care, so I couldn't assist him. Refuse is the opposite the last word. Co a one of the nurse assistant. One of the nurse assistant's duties is to measure vital signs. Duties. One of the nurse assistant's duties is to measure vital signs. Reporting abnormal vital signs is critical to your patient's well-being. The patient, doctor, nurse, and nurse assistant form a chain of communication. Studies show there is a link between stress and heart disease. That it shows there is a link between stress and heart disease. You will jeopardize your health if you continue smoking. Jeopardize. Jeopardize. Poner en peligro. ¿Te acuerdas que vimos peligro, jeopardize? Vamos a mirar. Si no la recuerdas, vamos a ponerla acá. Jeopardize. Poner en peligro. Jeopardize. You will jeopardize your health if you continue smoking. Jeopardize your health. Poner en peligro. The long-term care facility will provide the best care for your mother's needs. Provide. Okay, we have a, a, an interesting exercise 
to do or to solve here in our um, page. This unit, skills for the nursery assistant. Don't forget it, click here. Then number one, finally solve all this unit. We did it uh, together, but we have to finish it in your a uh, half an hour past a half hour to practice. So do it right now. If you want to learn by yourself, do it right now because you are learning a vocabulary, grammar, and you need practice. So bye-bye. See you tomorrow.